The Miami Marlins have the opportunity to advance to the World Series for just the third time in franchise history today and the first time in a quarter century. We currently lead the Cubs 2-0 in the NLCS and today we'll play games 3 and 4. If we win both games, we're going to the World Series and if not, well, the NLCS will continue to chug along. So the first two games ended up going really well for us. We won both of them at home. Both us and the Cubs rotations are built very similarly in the sense that we both have two legitimate aces at the top and both teams threw their top two pitchers on the mound and it was our guys who got the upper hand over the Cubs aces. In game one, the NL MVP, Edward Cabrera, threw seven innings allowing two runs while four different players went deep. In game two, it was Sandy Alcantara who historically has not played well for us in the playoffs. He was great in this game, throwing seven innings of one-run ball, and he never should have allowed that run to begin with if not for a bad defensive play by Nick Fortes, who made up for it later as he went deep for a second consecutive game as we currently lead the series 2-0 going into Wrigley Field. We're in a good spot right now, but we cannot get comfortable. We were in this exact same position last year in the NLCS against the Phillies. We won the first two games at home. We were feeling good. We knew the Phillies were probably an inferior team to us, but they had more playoff experience. And sure enough, that playoff experience really benefited them. The Phillies would wind up winning four of the next five games, going to the World Series. Now we have an interesting situation here with our pitching, specifically Max Meyer, who hasn't thrown in a game since July, but we may pitch him today. Jeffrey Springs will pitch in game three, and I'm undecided for game four. Maybe we go with Max Meyer. Maybe we go with a bullpen game that worked out well in the NLDS against the Mets. I will say this, Meyer will be available in the bullpen for game three as we're keeping all of our options open, but hopefully it doesn't come to that, and Jeffrey Springs has a good game. So we are here at Wrigley Field for Game 3 of the NLCS between the Marlins and the Cubs. Miami currently with a 2-0 series lead. The Marlins hoping to close out this series here within the next three games in Chicago before returning home. And we'll see if the Marlins can get back to the World Series for the first time in 24 years. We were able to win the first two games pretty handedly with two very solid pitching performances from Edward Cabrera and Sandy Alcantara. Obviously, our team usually wins when one of those guys is on the mound, but we're definitely not as good without them. Here's a look at the lineups, both teams mixing things up a little bit as both squads will be throwing out lefties. For the Cubs, it'll be these very solid Justin Steele. He's coming off a very solid performance in Game 3 at the NLDS. Seven innings of two-run ball against the Padres. He got the no decision, but the Cubs ended up winning that game largely because of his performance. Luis Robert hitting in the three-hole, returning to Chicago, where he played for six years, flies it up into foul territory, and it's caught by Harold Ramirez, who gets the start at first base today, over to Les. So Jeffrey Springs is going to be on the mound here for the Marlins. His first postseason outing was not so good. Five innings allowing four runs. He did get the win, but that's because our offense had its best game of the NLDS, scoring 10 runs against the Mets. Springs has been around the block, won a World Series last year with the Rays as he strikes out Luis Sarais, the former Marlin, who goes down looking. Will Smith, the fresh prince of Chicago now, 2-2. He goes down on the fastball. Good start for both pitchers as Steele and Springs each retire the side, only throwing 10 and 12 pitches respectively in their first innings. Into the second now, Alec Baum chases the slider as he goes around. Nick Fortes has homered in each of the last two games, looking to potentially get another one here, as this one is pretty high, not deep enough into left field, however, as it will be caught. And Justin Steele is through two perfect innings, neither squad with a base runner yet. Let's go bottom two. Harold Ramirez getting the start at first base today as the Cubs look to take advantage of the pitching matchup rather than having fellow lefty Rowdy Telez in. Ramirez rips a single into right field, and we have our first base runner of the game for either team, and the Cubs have a runner aboard here with two away. Interesting opportunity for the shortstop, Dansby Swanson. Grounder over to third. Boom, flips it over to second. Through two innings, both teams only have one combined base runner as both pitchers look really good so far. Here's Jesus Sanchez in the third. They called that pitch a strike, even though it was very clearly outside of the strike zone. 
2-2 now. This pitch is called a ball, even though it's inside the strike zone. So now the count is full for Sanchez, and ultimately he will draw a walk. Good patient at bat for Sanchez. He waited for the right pitch, and I guess he never got it, so he'll take his base. That'll bring up Brian De La Cruz. He hits this ball high and deep in a left field. Back at the track, at the wall, it's gone! Two-run homer for Brian De La Cruz, and the Miami Marlins are on the board first here in Game 3. De La Cruz with a two-run shot, his first home run of the playoffs, and so the Marlins get their first hit of the entire game, driving in two runs. The next batter, Isaac Stu, would get hit by a pitch, so he is aboard for Jazz Chisholm, who strikes out on the sweeping curve. Two away now for Luis Robert. As Steele looks to get back into a groove. But it seems like he has lost command at the strike zone with a walk, a hit by pitch, and now another walk as Luis Robert will take his base. Two on, two away. Big opportunity for Woody Landry, who struggled in the NLDS, but has been great so far against the Cubs with back-to-back -back three hit games, although he strikes out on the fastball. Good pitch by Steele, but a rough inning for him. He allows four base runners. Only one hit, though. But that one hit was a two-run homer for Brian De La Cruz. Let's go bottom three. Luis Garcia is up. He goes down looking. Nice pitch by Springs, who really seems to have caught fire early in this game. Here is Pete Crow Armstrong with a shallow fly ball in the left. De La Cruz after it, and he makes the grab. What a catch by Brian De La Cruz. Had the big homer in the top half of the inning. Now with a great defensive play in the bottom half. Luis Arise, 1 2, lines it into center. Luis Robert chases after it. He makes the play. Through three innings, Jeffrey Springs looks great. Although, that's what we said in game three against the Mets, and then he fell on his face in the fourth inning. So, hopefully, history does not repeat itself. Nick Fortes goes down looking. Nice pitch by Steele, who seems to be back in a rhythm after a rough inning of his own. Jesus Sanchez hits this one solidly into center. But PCA is under it to make the grab. Of the first four innings that Steele has thrown today, he's retired to the side in three of them. However, it is the Marlins who lead two to nothing. Steele hoping for some run production. His offense has given him nothing so far. We'll see if that changes with the sweet spot of the order up. That starts with Josh Rojas. Liner into center. That'll drop for a hit. And the Cubs get a base runner to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning. So Chicago gets a man on. Just their second hit of the game as a team. Will Smith gets hit by the pitch, but he went around. So that'll be ruled as a strike. Following pitch. Hits it well into left field. And that one goes off the wall. De La Cruz unable to make the play. And that'll go for a double. The runner holds up at third because he thought there was a chance that De La Cruz would catch it. Since there's nobody out, that's not too big of a deal. And so the Cubs have two runners in scoring position. And just like the fourth inning of Spring's last game, he's slowing down quick. He does strike out Ian Happ, though. That'll bring up Seiya Suzuki with a grounder to short. Jazz Chisholm will make the play, but Rojas at third will score. And it is a 2-1 ball game. Base hit should still tie it as that'll bring up Harold Ramirez, very solid contact hitter, and he strikes out on the circle change. The Marlins hold on to their lead as Springs gets out of the jam, only allowing one. Could have been a lot worse. So Miami is ahead by a run as we move into the fifth inning. Still only one hit as a team so far. Hassan Kim draws a walk, and that'll get a runner aboard here. That'll bring up Brian De La Cruz, who has the only hit of the game. A two-run homer back in the third inning. He's going to hit this one right to third. 5-4-3. Double play. Not quite as good of an at-bat as his first one, I've got to say. That'll bring us back to the top of the order. Isaac Stu hitting in the leadoff spot today. And he strikes out on the sweeping curve. The Marlins have mixed and matched the batting order throughout the postseason, particularly in this series against the Cubs with three different leadoff hitters. Good pitch by Steele to get the strikeout. As we go bottom five with two away, Pete Crow Armstrong lines it into left field. Little oppo poppo as this one gets to the foul wall. The speedster looks to make it to second, and he is barely safe. Good throw by Brian De La Cruz. But nonetheless, the Cubs are the runner in scoring position. And that'll bring up Luis Arise. He's the guy you want up here. Somebody who's a clutch hitter. He can hit for singles with ease. But instead, he chases the slider. Hassan Kim makes the play. 
And the Marlins hold on to their lead. That was a really good pitch by Springs to fool Luis Arise on the outside slider as it remains a 2-1 ball game. Going into the sixth inning, the Cubs would make a surprise move, pulling Justin Steele out of the game, and he'll be replaced by Jordan Montgomery. I don't get this move at all. Justin Steele has faced off against 19 batters, and he's only allowed one hit. I get the Cubs are losing, and I get that hit was a homer, but I feel like that's a really bad decision. Here's Woody Landry. He strikes out, so Montgomery retires beside. Maybe it wasn't that bad of a decision. Maybe the Marlins' offense just sucks today. That's a possibility as well. Bottom six. Here is Ian Happ up for Chicago. He's going to hit this one solidly into right. Jesus Sanchez completely misplays it. Uh, what was that? That should have been a 1-2-3 routine inning-ending fly ball. Instead, it's a triple. And the Cubs have a runner 90 feet away from home. And they're going to rule that a triple rather than an error. Say a Suzuki strikes out, so Springs gets out of the inning anyway. Thank God. Otherwise, that would have been catastrophic. The Marlins hold on to their lead as Springs records four outs in this inning, and he's not showing any signs of slowing down. I think he's got at least one, maybe two more innings out of him. Into the seventh, Alec Bohm lead things off with a single. That is just the second hit of the entire game for the Marlins. That'll bring up Nick Fortes. He grounds it to first, and the hit will not matter from Bohm at all because Nick Fortes grounds into a double play. Not ideal. Leave it to the Marlins to mess up with runners on base. Jesus Sanchez swings at a pitch that he absolutely should not have as Montgomery makes it through the seventh. He's been pitching quite well so far. Maybe the Cubs did make the right decision by pulling Steele when they did. Here is Harold Ramirez. He strikes out on the circle change. Strikeout number seven on the game for Springs. Here's number eight. He gets Dansby Swanson to go down looking on the fastball. We'll see if he can retire the side once more. It's Luis Garcia with a fly out into left. De La Cruz is under it, and he will make the play. Seven innings of one run ball for Jeffrey Springs. I think his day is likely done, although if he has the energy, which I think he does, the Marlins could still consider bringing him out for the eighth. Here's Jacob Perry coming into the game off the bench with a pinch hit single. Into right field, and the Marlins open up the inning with a runner aboard, their third hit of the game. That'll bring up Brian De La Cruz now, and he hits this one sharply over to second. It's deflected by a rise. They'll get the one out. Good defensive play by the Cubs to make sure that he didn't get by him. That'll bring up Isaac Stew, and he singles into right field. So the Marlins are now getting all these hits, and all of them are singles into right field. And so they've got two runners on with one away and a pretty nice opportunity for Luis Robert. Count is two and two with two away and two on. Robert lines this one high and deep and a left. Back at the track. It's gone! Three-run blast for Luis Robert. His team leading fourth home run of the postseason. And it is a 5-1 ball game as Luis Robert might have just iced game three of the NLCS. Robert legitimately has been the Marlins' best offensive player in this postseason series. And yeah, guys like Stu and Bohm have maybe gotten on base more. But Luis Robert has just been incredible offensively. His power has been remarkable. Four homers in seven games. So Montgomery will be taken out. He'll be replaced by Keegan Thompson, who gets Woody Landry to jam into an inside fastball. I don't know what Woody was thinking there. Woody Landry coming back down to earth after two big games. But a big inning. Three-run homer by Luis Robert as we go bottom eight. Reynaldo Lopez, another former Chicago White Sox, is in the game, returning to the city where he played for a number of seasons. He has been Mr. Reliable out of the bullpen, hasn't allowed a run yet in the postseason. Although Pete Crow Armstrong will look to change that as he will lead off the inning, shooting the gap in right field, and he will stay at second with a double. The Cubs have their fastest base runner aboard, and if we've learned anything about the Cubs throughout this postseason series, even when they're down, they're gonna keep hunting. Nice play there at third by Alec Bohm. Should have tried to throw it to second quicker, but I don't know if he expected to catch that liner off the bat of Luis Arise. Josh Rojas now rips this one into left center field. That one will one-hop off the wall for extra bases. Run scores, and it's now 5-2. to two. The Cubs are going to continue to claw and scratch as long as they can, but they still have a lot of damage control to make up. Rojas on third for Ian Happ, who strikes out. And Reynaldo Lopez gets out of the inning, only allowing the one run 
as it's a three-run ball game going into the ninth inning. Thompson making quick work of the lineup. Here against Sanchez, he strikes out on the low curveball, so he'll retire at the side, and we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Marlins with a three-run lead, looking to take a 3-0 series lead, and it'll be the closer, Johan Duran, who checks in the game. He's 2-2 two of two in save opportunities, including in game two of this series. He's pitched in two additional games as well. Here's Seiya Suzuki. Fly out into center. Luis Robert under it. There's one. The Marlins are two outs away from taking a 3-0 series lead. That'll bring up Harold Ramirez. He's going to hit this one sharply in the left field, and that one is barely foul by probably around seven-ish inches. That was so close to being a home run, and then he strikes out on the very next pitch. One out away. That'll bring up the shortstop. Dansby Swanson, and he's going to keep this game going for a little while longer, making sure that it stays fair. Solo home run for Dansby Swanson, his second of the postseason. And the Cubs bring the deficit down to two, as it's now five to three. Still a lot of damage control to be made up, though, as there's two outs here still. Luis Garcia swinging a miss on the fastball. The Miami Marlins are one win away from advancing to the World Series as they defeat the Cubs five to three here in game three at Wrigley. Very strong win today for the Fish with a brilliant performance on the mound from Jeffrey Springs. This is the reason why we signed him. We wanted another consistent veteran arm in the rotation who we could trust in the postseason. His first postseason start was not a good one, but today he was outstanding with seven innings of one run ball, striking out eight, getting the win. We've had some really brilliant pitching performances in this series as the Cubs offense just really hasn't been able to get going. Now, our offense did not have a good game themselves. Five runs on just five hits. We hit the ball better late once Justin Steele was taken out. But still, other than the two home runs by Luis Robert and Brian De La Cruz, we had no source of gaining runs. And without those homers, we probably don't end up winning this game. It was really the pitching that won it for us. Obviously, Springs was great. Now, the bullpen was not so great. But luckily, we had enough of the lead. I thought Justin Steele was brilliant. Five innings, only allowing one hit. I don't think they should have taken him out when they did. I think they should have kept it rolling. And I think bringing in Jordan Montgomery when they did was a mistake, even though he had two scoreless innings to start. So we now lead this series 3 to nothing, And historically, it's close to impossible to come back down 3 nothing in a playoff series, regardless of sport. In the history of the MLB playoffs, it's only happened once. Shout out to the 2004 Boston Red Sox who came back down 3-0 in the ALCS against the Yankees to win the series in seven. Obviously, they swept the Cardinals in the World Series that year to win their first championship in over 80 seasons. The Cubs hope to do the same, and it starts here in game four with 24-year-old Alfonso Estrada on the mound for Chicago. He will go up against Max Meyer, who will get the start today for the Marlins. Miami's had some really good pitching performances so far in this series. Chicago needs their offense to step up, and they need their young pitcher, who's only started 11 career regular season games and one career postseason game, to dig them out of this hole. Regular starters across the board as we take a look at the young 24-year-old Alfonso Estrada, a guy who the Marlins wanted to draft a few years back and has turned into a pretty good player with Chicago. His first career postseason start was a very good one. Seven innings of one run ball in the elimination game four against the Padres, which he ended up getting the win. Jazz Chisholm back at the top of the order today. He strikes out on the fastball. Good start there by the young Estrada. Isaac Stew, speaking of youngsters, 19 years old, continuing to pile on hits here in the postseason as he gets a single into right with two away. The Marlins only can get homers or singles into right, apparently. Woody Landry, did he go around? He did not, but the umpire says otherwise. They will say he did check his swing, and that'll wrap up the inning. So a pretty good start for Estrada. He allows the one hit, but other than that, no damage. Let's take a look at Max Meyer, whose career has been a very interesting path. Top three pick out of the University of Minnesota, and he ended up really being a late bloomer. His development started slow with the pandemic. Tommy John surgery certainly doesn't help, but here at age 28, he's finally figured it out. 
but now coming off an injury, he hasn't pitched in two months, and now he's in a high-stakes game with a World Series spot on the line as he allows a single by Luis Arise to get things started. Josh Rojas up next. He goes down on the high circle change. Good pitch up out of the zone. Will Smith now into right center. Robert unable to make the play. That one should go for extra bases as he misfires the throw. It goes to first base. Doesn't really matter, though, as neither runner is able to advance. But the Cubs have two guys in scoring position with only one away. Rowdy Telez flies this one up into right. Jesus Sanchez under it. He'll make the play. Runner looks to tag up. The throw to the plate is a beauty. Double play for the Marlins defense. It's Jesus Sanchez who makes the grab and throws out the runner as we have still a scoreless ball game into the second. Alec Bohm goes down on the low slider. Good pitch by Estrada. The youngster on the mound looks pretty good so far. Now face it off against Fortes. He only has four hits through the postseason. Three of them are homers, but only one other hit. And he flies out here over to Suzuki out in right field as the Marlins offense continues their struggles. Bottom two, Ian Happ draws a walk. And the Cubs start the inning with a base runner as Meyer continues to look a little shaky early on. He will get Seiya Suzuki to go down looking on the fastball. Now that'll bring up Luis Garcia. Full count. Rips it into the right field corner. That one will roll all the way to the wall. And that should drive in a run. No Jesus Sanchez throw will save you this time. It's an RBI triple for Luis Garcia. And the Cubs lead it 1-0. Pete Crow Armstrong now flies it into left. De La Cruz under it. He'll make the play. That should be enough to tag the runner up. The throw is a bullseye. He got him. Another double play. This time it's Brian De La Cruz in left field who throws out the runner. So both of the first two innings for the Cubs have ended with double plays by runners getting thrown out by Marlins outfielders. I feel like he was almost safe. That one was super close, unlike the first one. But regardless, another run taken off the board by the Marlins defense. Chisholm draws a walk, and Luis Robert now looking for another homer. As this one is high and deep at the track, at the wall, it's caught! A scaling grab at the wall by Ian Happ, preventing an extra base hit, likely preventing a run from being scored at least, as it remains 1-0. Dansby Swanson leads off the bottom of the third with the walk, and the Cubs continue to add base runners. Swanson looks to steal second. He's safe despite a pretty good throw by Fortes. So Chicago now already has a runner in scoring position. One away for Rojas. Rips this one into right field. That'll drive in a run, and it's now 2-0. And if not for some great defensive plays, this lead probably would be even bigger. Max Meyer really is not pitching that well, and I would not be surprised to see the Marlins go to the bullpen soon. Will Smith down the line and hits off of the foul wall. Another run scores, it's an RBI single for Will Smith and the Cubs now lead it three nothing. So from there, Max Meyer will be taken out of the game. And the concern that we had with Meyer is that after not pitching for two and a half months, he would look a little bit rusty. And that ended up definitely being the case. Two and a third inning, allowing three runs so far. And again, he really should have allowed more if not for some great defense. Jordan Hicks will come out of the bullpen to replace him. He got the start in game four of the NLDS against the Mets, throwing four solid innings as he strikes out Rowdy Telez. Now against the in-half, count is full, and he hits this one sharply into right center. Back at the track, at the wall, it goes off the wall. Run will score. It's now 4-0 Chicago with an RBI double by Ian Happ. In an elimination game, the Cubs clearly have shown up. Say Suzuki strikes out, but a big inning for the Cubbies as they drive in three and knock Meyer out of the game. Into the fourth inning. Chicago up comfortably currently as Isaac Stew goes down looking on the fastball. Now Alec Bohm is up with a full count, rips it into right, and that will drop for a hit. The Marlins just need to start stacking base runners. That was the issue in game three. They were lucky to have run support. They don't have that same luxury today. Here's Sanchez in the right center. One hops off the wall. 
Ball on his high horse, rounds third, heads to the plate. There will be no relay throw. And the Marlins are on the board off of the RBI double by Jesus Sanchez. It's now 4-1. Hicks retires Visay quickly in the bottom of the fourth inning as Swanson goes down looking. Marlins still have a lot of work to do, but that was a solid inning. And hey, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Top five, Jacob Berry swings and misses on the fastball. Estrada continuing to have, overall, another really good start coming off a good start in the previous round against San Diego. Jazz Chisholm hits this one nicely into left field, but it will be caught near the wall. Five innings of one-run ball for Estrada. We saw the Cubs take Justin Steele out early in the last game. They seem to take their guys out early. I wouldn't be surprised if he's done after five. Rojas strikes out. Now here's Will Smith. He's had himself a day offensively. That's his third hit of the game. He's going to try to leg this into a double. The Marlins were very nonchalant about moving the ball. And Will Smith capitalizes. He's now in scoring position. Telez with a grounder to third. Broken bat. Boom makes the play. And so that'll wrap up the fifth. Jordan Hicks pitching really well out of the bullpen with no earned runs of nearly three innings of work. And we move into the sixth. My hypothesis is correct. Estrada taken out of the game. I still feel like this is too early. He'll be replaced by Jackson Ferris, who has not pitched well in the postseason. He has not pitched well in this series against the Marlins, but he does strike out Luis Robert. That's a big one. Two away now for Woody Landry. Lefty on lefty matchup, and Landry pops this one up. Will Smith should make the play, and he does. So the Cubs retire at the side. Woody Landry has zero hits since game two. As the Marlins make a pitching change of their own, it'll be Griffin Jackson in the game. He's allowed one run in three and a third's inning so far. He's been quite solid. As he faces off against Ian Happ, who goes down chasing on the knuckle curve. That was a great pitch. Now Luis Garcia, liner pass the diving glove of Jazz Chisholm. That'll go for a base hit. He's going to look to get this one to second. Robert quicker to make the throw, and he's in time. That's the third inning today to end by a Cubs runner being thrown out. They've been awfully aggressive on the bases. Into the seventh, Alec Bohm starts the inning with a walk. That'll bring up Jesus Sanchez. He finds himself ahead 3-1. Did he go around? No, and he draws a walk. So the Marlins get two early base runners, and the tying run is up to bat. It's Nick Fortes, and he goes down looking on the low fastball. He wanted to be patient there, but with two strikes, you got to protect, and he goes down looking. Aurelvis Martinez into the game off the bench as a pinch hitter. Pops this one up into shallow right field, and it will drop. Run will look to score. He is safe. Bad throw to third. Both runners think about moving, then they wisely head back. It's an RBI single for Aurelvis Martinez. It's a one-run game with another run 90 feet away from home. The tied run on first base, and the go-ahead run at the plate. It's De La Cruz who pops this one up into right field. Seiya Suzuki will look to make the catch, and he does. That's the runner, Sanchez, looking to tag up. Throw to the plate. It's in time! The Cubs give Miami a nice taste of their own medicine. Sanchez, gun down, headed to the plate. The Marlins do add a run, though. It's 4-2. to two. Andres Vina comes out of the bullpen for Miami. He's pitched very well so far in the postseason, especially for a 22-year-old rookie as he strikes out Pete Crow Armstrong to get things started. Now against Luis Arise with two away, flies it into center, and Robert is unable to make the play. Would have been a really impressive catch, but it does go for a base hit, and the Cubs get a runner aboard. That'll bring up Josh Rojas. He's been solid today, one of three. Flies it into center. Robert is under it, and he will make the play. That'll wrap up the seventh. Chicago leads by two, still room to make a comeback, but the Marlins are in danger of not getting the sweep that they would have hoped for. Only four hits as a team, and that's coming off a game where they only had five. It's time for the Cubs back end of the bullpen to look to finish things off. That'll start with Jonathan Hernandez here in the eighth as Jazz Chisholm draws a walk. The Marlins haven't been able to get hits, but they have gotten plenty of walks today. Luis Robert 0 for 3. Needs something out of him. He flies this one up into right, and it is caught by Suzuki. As good as Luis Robert has been in the postseason, not so good today. 0 for 4. 
That'll bring up Woody Landry. He needs to wake up, and instead he swings at a slider well outside the strike zone. I don't know what he was thinking. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, still 4-2. Camilo Duvall into the game for Miami. He's allowed three runs in three and two-thirds postseason innings as he strikes out Rowdy Telez, two away. That will bring up Ian Happ, who's had a solid day, especially defensively out in left field. And he goes down as well. So Camilo Duvall retires to the side, and the stage is set going into the top of the ninth inning. The Marlins trail by two, looking to keep this game alive. Coming out of the bullpen for Chicago will be Cody Hoyer. Five of five in save opportunities. They haven't had to use him yet in this series because, well, they haven't had any save opportunities because they aren't winning any games yet. Alec Bohm, here's another walk. And the Marlins get a base runner to start the inning with the tying run up and nobody out. Jesus Sanchez has a full count, and he pops this one up. That was a good pitch to hit, too. But it looks like he just mistimed it, and it's caught over at third base for the first out of the inning by Rojas. That'll bring up the following hitter, Nick Fortes. Count is also full for him. Hoyer's at 22 pitches against just three batters. But Fortez is only able to pop this one up into a shallow outfield, and it's caught by Luis Arise. The Marlins are making Cody Hoyer work, but he's getting out two away. That'll bring up the number eight hitter, Aurelvis Martinez, who had a pinch hit RBI single in his last at bat. Count is two and one, and Martinez pops this one up as well over to first base, and Rowdy Telez will come down with it. The Chicago Cubs avoid the sweep as they beat the Marlins 4-2 here in Game 4. While this is a game that the Marlins technically could afford to lose and they still lead the series 3-1, as we saw last year, again, we cannot get complacent and comfortable. If the Phillies can win 4-5, of five, I think the Cubs can win 3 in a row. I don't think it's out of the question, especially with our offense really struggling right now. We only got 9 hits through the two games today. That's just quite frankly not enough. Four hits today. Now we did have good plate discipline. We drew quite a few walks, but we just haven't gotten enough from our hitting core. We need more than one extra base hit, two runs and four hits. Max Meyer did not pitch well. I will say the bullpen did pitch well and Meyer probably won't pitch again in this series and everybody else who's pitched against the Cubs has been pretty good. Alfonso Estrada had a good start. The bullpen was pretty solid for Chicago, and ultimately that's the reason why they won. Their offense hasn't been dreadful throughout these first four games to where it's been a major problem, but they haven't exactly been very good either, and it's not going to get any easier for them in Game 5 because Edward Cabrera will be on the mound. The Rangers won Game 3 against Tampa Bay, so that series looks a little more competitive as it's now 2-1. to one while our series is 3-1. to one. And we'll have another opportunity to advance in the World Series in the next episode with Edward Cabrera facing off against Cade Horton. I mean, for an elimination game, if that's the pitching matchup, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I do like our chances. Next episode will be only Game 5, being that that is an elimination game. That'll be the only game of the episode. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.